Cleaver has an extremely clutch ability called Sharpness that boosts slicing moves by 1.5 times. Luckily, its signature move, Stone Axe, is a 65 base power rock move that gets the boost from Sharpness. Stone Axe is also extremely clutch because not only is it a strong stab move, it also sets up Stealth Rock on the opponent's side. When we slap a Choice Scarf on Cleaver to be sneaky and speedy, Cleaver's a super fun Pokemon to use. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun one here. It comes right down to the wire. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k and the support is greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Rabombi. This thing is wearing his little scarf, acting all cute, but honestly, this is such an annoying Pokemon. We decide to lead off with the Rotom and we have actually a pretty good matchup here. However, I'm gonna go right for the Volt Switch here, expecting Maybe they go for a switch, I can get some momentum. However, they just go for the sticky web. Uh, and that's pretty much what these things do. They can potentially quiver dance and set up. A lot of the time they are focus sash. So regardless, it's nice to be able to break the sash here. But sadly, with the sticky web up, we are going to be at a little bit of a speed disadvantage here. So I'm going to go ahead and volt switch right into the cleaver. Now, cleavage comes in ready to, uh, ready to get some stuff going. This is actually a choice scarf cleaver where you're able to actually catch a lot of Pokemon off guard and out speed. And this thing does insane damage, but more importantly, we're actually able to get damage while setting up our Stealth Rock with that Stone Ed, or the Stone Axe, which is what I'm going to go for here, and they're going to end up switching into none other than the blue friggin' flower. This thing, when you touch it, it just spews its toxic spikes all over the place. Uh, but I do hit it with the Stone Axe, I get some quality damage there. Uh, it does activate their toxic debris, but honestly, I'm fine with this because I do have an answer to the hazards in the back, so... I'm thinking, you know, not having a poison type is kind of annoying to be able to soak those up. But I'm going to go ahead and tuck the cleaver in the back pocket. It's going to be great for me later. They don't know that this thing is Choice Scarf. So hopefully uh, we, can, we can get the element of surprise on our side there. So I decided to go into the Gudra. Reason is, I know I can take attacks from this thing all day. And then I can kind of uh, whittle it down and, and be able to take care of it. So Slime Shady comes in. I, I do take a normal poison. It's better than having two layers of Toxic Spikes up. Uh, because the damage will not stack, but Gudra is just thick enough to be able to kind of take some attacks out here. So uh, I get hurt by some poison as they set up the Stealth Rock, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm just going to go for the T-Bolt here. They decide to stay in, hit me with an Earth Power, and you really see the absolute thickness of the Assault Vest Gudra. Able to take that, no problem. Um, unfortunately, however, I don't have recovery, and it's looking like I'm willing to kind of trade Gudra for the Glamora here, which I'm kind of fine with. My team isn't great against this Pokemon, so... Uh, he goes for another Earth Power here, knocks me down to half with the special defense drop. It's going to be bad later, but I drop a Draco on his ass and down goes the Glamora. So it did get up to Toxic Spikes and the Stealth Rock. However, it, I'm honestly kind of fine with that. Like I said, my team does not deal with that thing a whole lot and we're in a good spot here. So now they get a Revenge Switch into whatever they like. They're going to decide to go back into the Robombi and I'm thinking to myself, you are not, no, 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 you are not going to be able to Quiver Dance on me. No way. I do have... Uh, a special defense drop, but I should be able to take an attack from this thing. Uh, considering going for the Dragon Tail, however, they just go for a Draining Kiss, and I decided to try to just get some damage. The Dragon Tail likely would have been the better play, would have forced it to go back into the Stealth Rock, but I just go for the Ice Beam thinking, I just need, honestly, any sort of chip on this thing, and uh, I, should be, I should be fine. So, the Poison doesn't quite knock me out, they're just going to be able to essentially just finish me off with one more Draining Kiss here which is exactly what happens, but this thing is chipped down to the point where it's it's not scary. Plus, without any boosts, we should mostly be fine. I really should have clicked the Dragon Tail there. would have definitely been the, the optimal play, but it is what it is, and now we get a Revenge Switch. So, I'm thinking, hey, this place is a dump. I'm going to bring in Dust Buster, who's going to pull out the old broom and hopefully be able to tidy this damn place up a bit and uh, get rid of all the hazards that are around. So, we get caught up in a sticky web, we get poisoned by the Toxic Spikes, and we get hurt by the Stealth Rock. So... Furret not, is not having any of this shit. We're going to go for the Tidy Up here. Um, this is a Furret that is running the moveset basically just Tidy Up and Last Resort. Essentially what the plan is, I can go for that Tidy Up, get a Speed Boost, um, and then essentially be able to go for that Last Resort considering I've used all my other moves. Having only two gives you the advantage there. So I go for the Tidy Up. That's going to get rid of all the hazards on the field, even the Stealth Rock on their side. But I still have the Cleaver, cleaver nice and healthy in the back so I can potentially set those back up. But... I mostly just focused on getting that sticky web out of here because with that speed being hindered, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin my, my kind of plans here. So unfortunately, since I switched into the sticky web, I'm actually still uh, at neutral speed and Rabombi is naturally faster. So it's able to outspeed, goes for another psychic here, which surprisingly I am able to live, which is kind of amazing. 
Uh, and I do luckily get to fire off the last resort. I throw stars at this dude's face, finish it with an easy critical hit, and it definitely mattered, and down goes the Rabombi. So, Furret, unfortunately, is going to die to the poison. So the hazard still did get my ass. While we did tidy him up, they still, you know, had the effects and just are annoying. But with Rabombi gone, we know they're not able to set back up the sticky web, and you know, we're in a pretty decent spot. So, on the empty battlefield, they're going to go into the Espathra. This is probably... Like, one of my most hated Pokemon to play against. You're gonna... Not only because its haircut is ass, but because this thing is just so annoying. So, I go into Cleaver here, uh, and Choice Scarf Cleaver is gonna be able to outspeed this thing. And I'm honestly thinking this is probably running something like a Focus Sash. I'm honestly not really sure. But they go for the Protect, uh, which of course is because they want to get that Speed Boost ability. Gonna boost them up. A lot of the time, what you're gonna see with these is a Combine Speed Boost set with that Protect and Stored Power. And honestly, an extremely scary Pokemon. So... Uh, they do go for the Calm Mind here, and they are faster after the speed boost. However, I can hit them with a nice and powerful U-turn here, and essentially tuck Cleaver in the back, while also knocking this thing down to its Focus Sash. So, while I do get it down to its Sash, this thing is still actually quite the damn problem, because when this thing starts to stack up those stat boosts, Stored Power is going to become extremely powerful, and I'm kind of running out of options here. So, what I decided to do is, hey, Tropius, you're like kind of bulky, I don't know. Tropius, you got some bananas on your neck. Come in ready to have some good time with some fucking potassium. So, my plan is this. I think I can take an attack at this point with the boost that it has. All I need to do is go for the Leaf Blade to finish it off. They have other plans, however. Of course, they just have no reason not to just go for another Protect here. It gives them another turn of Speed Boost. And this is the fastest damn Ostrich in all of the land. And, uh... I'm feeling like I could potentially be swept by an Espatha right here. So, essentially, all I can really do is stay in. They go for that Stored Power and Tropius somehow... By the skin of his bananas, is able to live <laughs> with 10 HP. That's going to knock me down to my Salic Berry, which doesn't really matter. But more importantly, we get the Leaf Blade off, and that does finish off the Espathra. So, that was actually kind of insane. And if Tropius has ever done anything in his life, uh, that, was, that, was, that was looking solid. So, now they get a free switch, however, and they're going to go into the Iron Moth. It does activate its Quark Drive, which is going to give it a nice little special attack boost. And we go from seeing one scary-ass Pokemon to the next. So... I end up just going for the Terra Blast here. I don't really want to commit my Terra at this point, um, as they just finished me off with a Fire Dance. So, Fiery, Fiery Dance. It's going to get essentially to the point where now this is a plus two special attack. It does the Quark Drive, uh, plus the boost it does get from the Fiery Dance here. So, very scary Moth. He's got some Doritos hanging around him, but I have myself an Easy Bake Oven. I'm feeling like I could go Cleaver and basically I have to risk the stone axe missing so I go into I go into Rotom thinking I can take one sludge wave from this however it unfortunately does have enough damage it probably does figure at plus two that Rotom was gonna go down there so that is unfortunate and now I'm kind of I'm really running out of options here but I have two of my greatest mons left and the mons that they have in the back are actually pretty scary but I know Empoleon should for sure be able to take an attack. The reason why I didn't want to go into this in the first place is because essentially I have to roll a Hydro Pump. Luckily though, I do connect on the Hydro Pump that is going to be enough to take care of the Moth. And that is another huge threat out of the way. Luckily, uh, Empoleon is able to live that Energy Ball pretty nicely. And with the Life Orb, it's able to finish it off. So, their final two Pokemon are going to be Garchomp and a Gardevoir. So, Garchomp comes in, Natural Predator against, you know, Steel Penguin. However, I am equipped with the Terra Flying at this point. I am going to go for that, hoping that they go for the Earthquake. I can essentially bypass the Earthquake, finish it off with an Ice Beam, and then it's going to come down to if I can defeat uh, the Garchomp in the back. But I have been conserving the Cleaver. Now, the Cleaver with the Choice Scarf is essentially here to catch it off guard. So, I go for that Terra Flying. Uh, they are going to go for the Earthquake. Luckily, I'm able to. i floating above that shit. I go for the Ice Beam. And it is going to finish off the Garchomp, which is amazing. So, holding on to my Terra ended up paying off. And at this point, I am going to be slower than the Gardevoir. But it's going to come down to if Cleaver can make it happen for me. So, this thing comes in. It is a very scary Mon and easily just outspeeds me. I considered getting an Agility up uh, against the Iron Moth, but it didn't seem worth it to... I still had to roll a Hydro Pump anyway, so... Um, at this point, I'm feeling confident with the Cleaver. They are going to end up going for the Terra here. It ends up being Terra Fairy. They want to get as much damage as possible uh, with the Moonblast, which is uh, a, a smart play. So they put the heart on their head, uh, looking like a doofus, but the Moonblast is going to finish off the Empoleon. So listen, I have a Cleaver and a Dream. With Cleaver's Sharpness ability, Stone Axe should have enough or close damage to be able to finish off a Gardevoir at full health. 
Uh, that's why it's unfortunate I got rid of my own Stealth Rock um, when I went for that Tidy Up. But we do see the Life Orb, which means they can likely knock me out with a Moon Blast. But this Cleavage is running the Choice Scarf, and we are quick, baby. My feet are looking fast. I'm going to essentially go into this thing. All I can do is go for the Stone Axe. It's my highest damage output. I need to not miss and we can be clutch. I go ahead, I outspeed, the Stone Axe does connect, and down goes the Gardevoir. The damage was extremely close on a roll for that to be able to finish it off, but thankfully, we are sharp out here, and sharpness ability does allow us uh, to finish it off. And the funniest part is, we even just lay down some Stealth Rock for all of their non-existing Pokemon in the back. So that's gonna be the end of the game. I thought that was just a, a really close ending, and it kind of came down to Stone Axe hitting. And luckily, Cleaver came in the clutch there, and you love to see it. Thank you guys. Very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.